The first course is cooked by Francesco Ricci. He presents a classic Italian tartelloni with spinach, Swiss chard, ricotta, and Parmesan cheese served with butter. From South Carolina, Jeff Tuttle prepares quail stuffed with wild rice and presented with herbed wild mushroom sauce, Brussels sprout leaves, and wilted spinach. Finally, J.J. Stith presents a tart fashioned from brioche dough and baked with a variety of mixed berries. It will be presented with raspberry puree and ice cream. At the time of taping, Francesco Ricci's evocative Italian restaurant, E. Ricci, was thriving in the nation's capital. He has since moved to Bethesda, Maryland, and is chef owner of Cesco Trattoria, specializing in food of the Tuscan tradition. His first course is an example, tartelloni. Uh, first, we start to do the pasta so we can let uh, rest for a while while we are doing the filling. And of course, the pasta is uh, flour, eggs, and uh, a little olive oil with a little pinch of salt. We do our oil in the middle. I have a pork. Uh, the quantity is uh, under grams of flour as for one egg. The purists say that every kilo you use no more than six eggs. If you need liquid, you put some water. But important is to do the dough. You put a little salt and a little olive oil. Yeah, in the restaurant, of course, we have mod modern machinery, and uh, everything is done is done mechanically. But uh, this is the old way to do, and I believe everybody in the house can do this way. And if you are careful, the you will incorporate in the egg as much flour as need, no more than that. The dough has to have a nice consistency, but no, have not to be too hard. Now we can start to do with our hands. We don't make this. We work for a couple of minutes or even five just to make a nice dough, and we cover the dough and uh, we, let, uh, we let rest for a good half hour. Now we are working on the ingredients for the filling, and uh, it's possible to use all kind of uh, green uh, grass, or, but we use spinach, which we already boil it, cook and chop very well through the food processor, and the uh, Swiss chard. We had butter, which is something that we have to do, and we put on the fire. Pepper. And that's to cook, cook for five minutes just to incorporate the flavor and we, our nutmeg fresh grated Let cool off briefly, and uh, we'll put all the other ingredients. Now we add our ricotta. Uh, 
and the Parmesan cheese. I don't put all, I put in two times because I want to test. Yes. After the pasta has rested, it's rolled into sheets and the filling is piped on. You make like little square piece of pasta. And we fill it up. Now we can give several shape. One that we use generally, it is something like this. And we do a line. I can see my old grandmother doing this for hours. Now, we try to do fresh two times, two times a day here because when we have an order to go out, is the water boiling? The only things we have to do is to take our order. I do butter and sage. Put in the water. Put in the water. Wait for them to come up, which is 30, 40 seconds maximum. And uh, the dish is ready. So what concerns service is, is very fast and the bean cook at the moment is very good. The tartelloni is simply served with melted butter and a sage leaf garnish. The executive chef at the Tony Polly's Plantation Golf and Country Club, Jeff Tuttle, opened the kitchen in 1990. His early cooking experience was in Maine and New York State, but since coming to South Carolina, he has taken to that region's distinctive food. Here is his wild rice stuffed quail. The quail stuffing begins with minced shallot, onion, and garlic, along with chopped tarragon and rosemary. The wild rice has already been cooked in chicken stock. Bloomed rice, our sauteed shallots and onions and herbs, and our toasted pecans, which we've chopped, and just lightly toss that on the floor. Now here we have semi-boneless quail. It's called a European-style quail. These are South Carolina quail, not wild. They are farm raised in South Carolina. You'll see the interior bone has been taken out. So really the only bones left in them are the leg bones and the little wing bones. The rest of the bird is boneless. And we'll take a few spoons of the stuffing.
try to roughly approximate the size of the bird when he was alive. When you get the stuffing in, this pin just comes right out. And you can just fold the legs around. The quail goes into a 350 degree oven until a spot thermometer inserted into the stuffing reads 160. The wild mushroom sauce that will accompany starts with minced shallots in clarified butter. Again, fresh rosemary, fresh tarragon, thyme, Parsley. While the sauce is cooking, we're going to do some more mushrooms we're using the shiitake mushrooms. These are local. Carolina shiitakes they come from Johns Island in South Carolina. Reduced heavy cream is added to the shallot mixture. When you reduce heavy cream, it takes on a whole different flavor. It becomes sweeter and creamier and naturally thick. The sliced mushrooms are also started in clarified butter. Lightly salt and pepper. Another side dish, which is labor intensive, even if you're one of the 10 people on earth who like Brussels sprouts, is to separate the leaves from each sprout. When the mushrooms are cooked, you stir your cream, make sure all your herbs are incorporated, you drain off some of the excess butter. portion of the cream to the mushrooms. Spinach is wilted in clarified butter, then in the same pan the Brussels sprout leaves are also cooked in butter. Today we'll need a little salt and pepper. For the plate, take some of our spinach, arrange it off to the side. Our herbed wild mushroom sauce. Saute of Brussels sprout leaves. And then a whole roasted quail on top. Some rosemary. Thank you.
Juanita J. Stith, known by everyone as JJ, grew up in Virginia and started cooking at five. After high school, she spent nine years in the Marines, correct training for any chef. She attended the California Culinary Academy and is now pastry chef at Aqua at the Bellagio in Las Vegas. Here is her berry brioche. First, I will be making the brioche dough. The ingredients are flour, eggs, butter, yeast, and salt. What a little salt and sugar, I'm sorry. I'm going to put the flour in the bowl first. The yeast uh, with the salt and the sugar. Mix to combine. Mixing, uh, mixing the eggs with the yeast. Pouring the eggs and the yeast into the bowl. I'm adding the one and a half teaspoons of water. Once it's formed a ball, then you can start to add the butter in small pats. Once the butter is incorporated, mix on medium speed for four minutes. So I spray the bowl lightly. The dough will rest overnight in the refrigeration, covered. So after the dough has been refrigerated um, overnight, you can divide it between in about 10 portions. You're going to shape it into balls um, and let it rest until the dough relaxes. Until the dough relaxes, you can just smack it out into a nice disc. And you roll it out into about a six inch circle. Sorry. You brush out the excess flour. You're going to shape the tarts with a little water on the rim. Docking the, I'm docking the bottoms. Keep the dough crisp. I'm brushing the outside edge with a little bit of water. Um, brioche dough is really sweet, has a lot of butter and fat in it. It tends to get over brown. I'm sprinkling the edge with a little turbinated sugar for texture. The tarts are left at room temperature for 20 minutes. Meanwhile, the filling is prepared. It contains blueberries, blackberries, and raspberries. All right, to that, I'm going to add a tablespoon of lemon juice, a tablespoon of vanilla extract, and cornstarch and sugar. And just toss them together really gently. And then scoop the filling into the middle of each tart. The 
The berries will bake down so you can overfill them a little bit. Bake at 350 degrees for 12 to 15 minutes. Here, sprinkle the edges with powdered sugar. I'm just going to drizzle a raspberry coulis around. It's a really rustic dish. And a couple of drops of crema glass around. Uh, I'm pairing this with Tahitian vanilla ice cream. It's just, because it's berries, you need something really simple and light, yet flavorful to go with it. Tahitian being the best of the vanilla beans. A big scoop on top. A nice sprig of mint. And I'm giving this an up and down sugar, I call it. It's just a nice sugar garnish.